Welcome to Electra Online. Now let's talk about continental drift and plate tectonics. The Earth's crust is not a solid piece all around the world. In some cases, planets do have a solid crust, but in the case of the Earth, the crust is divided into 16 large plates called continental plates, and therefore we talk about plate tectonics because those plates can actually move independent of one another. And the cause of that movement is, again, the interior of the Earth is heated by, of course, the tidal forces of the Moon and the Sun, as well as all the radioactive decay pouring enormous quantities of heat into the interior, keeping portions of the interior in a molten and liquid state. The asthenosphere just below the crust and the lithosphere allows the portion of the crust and the lithosphere to move independently of one another. So they have all these various plates on the Earth making the Earth's crust and the boundaries between those plates. And it's at those boundaries that a lot of geological activity occurs, such as earthquakes and volcanic activity. So what we want to do in this video is, is take a look and see what causes the movement of those tectonic plates. Well, first of all, let's take a look at some of the most important ones. So we have two, four, six, seven very large plates covering most of the Earth's surface. They are the North American plate, over, of course, North America sits on top of that. We have the South American plate. We have the Pacific plate. Most of the Pacific Ocean is one solid piece of crust that is independent of everything else on the Earth. And so along that rim of the Pacific Ocean is what we call the Ring of Fire because there's so much geological activity with earthquakes and volcanic activity, tsunamis, all these things that happen because that region of the world does not, uh, that region of the world, that ring around the Pacific is where many volcanoes exist and many earthquakes happen on a regular basis. We have the Eurasian plate that contains both Europe and Asia. We have the African plate con containing the continent of Africa. The Antarctic plate is a separate plate down at the bottom there. And the Indian Australian plate, which is slowly moving up against the uh, what we call the Eurasian plate. And that's where those two meet, is where the Himalayan mountains are still growing in size. The Himalayan mountains are still being pushed up because of where the two plates collide. At the boundaries, and actually I should say there's probably about four different kind of boundaries. I'm going to take two of them and separate them. So there's four boundary activities really that happens at these various boundaries. One of them is what we call a transform boundary. A transform boundary is where two plates rub against one another. Sometimes one is going in one direction, the other plate is going in the opposite direction. And as time goes by, the sides, they, they scrape against one another, they typically get locked in, and then when they get pushed and pushed and pushed, eventually they unlock and then there's an earthquake that happens. The San Andreas Fault, the San Andreas, the San Andreas Fault, that's how we pronounce it, the San Andreas Fault, we run, we runs through a big portion of California, is one of those boundaries, except in that case, both plates are actually moving in the same direction, but one plate moving a little bit faster than the other. Another kind of boundary is what we call a divergent boundary, where the two plates actually move away from one another. And so that allows the liquid portion of the lithosphere to well up and form new mountain ranges. That happens all the way along the Atlantic Ocean. So let's take a look here. Here's the Atlantic Ocean. So here we have North America, we have Europe, and all down the Atlantic Ocean, pretty well in the middle, somewhere halfway between North America and Europe, South America and Africa, there's a huge mountain ridge that stretches over 20,000 kilometers in length that runs from the northern, uh, the northern hemisphere all the way down to the southern hemisphere, where the two plates are separating from one another. And so we have that huge mount, mountain um, the huge mountain range that stretches down the entire length of the uh, Atlantic Ocean. We have what we call convergent boundaries, where two boundaries, where two plates actually collide with one another along the coast of North America, the Pacific coast of North America, where the Cascade Mountains are. Those are a result of the two plates colliding with one another. And then the last type of boundaries, where you have a collision, but one plate is actually being pushed underneath the other plate. That's called a subduction. So what happens is that the plate is actually being pushed back into the interior of the Earth to be then part of the interior of the Earth again. And that happens where the Indian plate, the Indian and the Australian plate are being pushed up against the Himalayan mountains, they actually subducting underneath the Eurasian plate, pushing the Eurasian plate up, and that is where the largest mountains, the tallest mountains in the world exist, the Himalayan mountains, basically again because of that subduction process from one plate to the other. What sets all this in motion? 
Well, we have what we call an upward flow, especially where the ocean region exists, such as at the center of the Atlantic Ocean. As we have the upward flow, some of that upward flow turns over here and runs underneath the lithosphere, causing the frictional forces to exist. So we have this continual, what we call convection flow inside the asthenosphere, causing some forces to exist pushing the friction force, you're pushing against the continents that lay above it, that's on the lithosphere in the crust, and that continuous pushing of these convection currents in the asthenosphere causes these uh, plates to move independently of one another. Then again, we end up at a downward flow, the flow comes back in the other direction, and we have these convection currents that push these enormous forces at the bottom of these plates, causing these plates to move in different directions. This is what sets everything in motion again, how can that happen? Because there's still sufficient interior heat in the Earth's interior for these motions to exist and therefore for continental drift to exist and for this continual mountain building, mountain erosion and changing of the surface. So planets and moons that still have surface features that are constantly changing is mostly because one, they have an atmosphere and two, there's enough interior heat for motion to exist in the, in the, on the surface of the Earth. That's what sets everything in motion. That's why we have plate tectonics. Probably if you come back to the Earth three, four billion years from now, chances are that there'll be a lot less tectonic plate movement because that motion will slow down due to the gradual cooling of the interior of the Earth. But at this point, the Earth is still a very geologically active planet and therefore these things are still continually happening and there's no end in sight, at least for us humans, living on the surface of the Earth when it comes to earthquakes, volcanic activity, and so forth, that will go on for many hundreds and probably for many more billions of years before it will subside.